It's another book review written by Murphy coming to you with another book review. I just finished reading The Big Sort, Why the Clustering of Like-Minded America is Tearing Us Apart. This is written by Bill Bishop and I believe it was written in 2009. Published, the paperback was published in 2009. 2009 is the year the iPhone came out, as I recall, and that is the very beginning. So this is before everybody was on their phone all the time on all the socials all the time. Before that, our clustering was not as severe. Now it's even more so. However, I heard this, I heard of this book because Brene Brown mentioned it in Braving the Wilderness, which I found a really enjoyable book. She mentioned the big short. I'm like, oh, I'm going to find it. So I found the book at the library, listened to the audiobook, and this is what I learned. The end of it is basically, it, they say it, the clustering of like-minded America is tearing us apart. We have gathered into groups that everybody thinks alike in that group, and that's not good for us. Because we aren't able to see other people's points of view, we aren't able to come up with ideas of how things might be different and what we could do to to change and accommodate everybody. When you're not listening to everybody, you can't make the changes to accommodate everybody. Hmm. All right. So he goes, this is a this is nerdy, big, dense uh, data kind of book. He, he talks about all the way back in the times of the founding fathers, the Federalist Papers, Hamilton comes up. Okay, Hamilton and his buddies. He actually talks about the culture that was created when the Capitol was, Congress was first in session, like at the first beginning of it all. He talks about the 20th century. He defines when he believes that he can track because he does this through analyzing data. Yeah, not by having opinions, but he does it through analyzing data. He says that in the 20th century, there was this huge spike in confidence in the government. You know when that was? Right after World War II, we were feeling pretty happy with ourselves and happy with the government having got us through a pretty nasty war. So from the 1940s through the 1950s and into 1965, everyone's like, yeah, the government's great. We love the government. And then in 65, people are like, mm, uh, no. During that time of great confidence, people would have their political party that they were part of, but their political party didn't determine all of their beliefs. They would have, you know, they say, yeah, I'm a Democrat, but I think this and this and this, and I have my own opinions. I'm a Republican, I think this and this, and I have my own opinions. Well, after 1965, things started to sort themselves out. I got a light on my head. <laughs> So they started to kind of resort themselves. People began to gravitate towards um, different places to live. The, the country as a whole was changing a lot as well. Jobs were changing, churches were changing, colleges were changing. There was, you know, some noise about that at the time. You want to go back in history and see who's wearing flowers in their hair? Hmm. So a lot of stuff was happening to change people's standard set of beliefs. So it is human nature to want to be around people who agree with you because you don't want to have to argue all the time with everybody and have to explain. You like It's nice to have a comfortable baseline. And people would move towards, physically move their homes, raise their families in places where they had that kind of homogeneous understanding, homogeneous understanding of what people believed. He tracks politics. He tracks how churches, because churches are a place that community happens. He talks about how um, mega churches use this to grow mega and be places that could feel super comfortable. Even as they were so large, they still created places where people could feel comfortable and find their spot and belong. This is very interesting. And he also talks about how people who, you know, there's like some places where, well, 
I live in Los Angeles, so this is a place where people go if they're going to be in the movies. All right? That's how it goes. He talks about um, Portland is a place where all the comic book authors go. And there are certain sort of Silicon Valley is where the um, tech people go. Ah! <laughs> so that's, that's what's happening. People kind of start to, to gather in places of like-minded areas. Okay. He's tracking it. He's tracking the numbers. He's tracking the history of it. And he is also tracking how it's not healthy. It's not a good idea. I mean, he does say, he does say it. It's tearing us apart. We need, we need to have difference of opinions. Now, here's where I talk about my personal thoughts. I believe so much in diversity. I believe so much in diversity that it's a toolkit. When I have to have a problem that needs solving, I need lots of different perspectives. I need people who have different viewpoints and can let me know. Even if it's stupid, <laughs> well, stupid, even if it feels ridiculous and like, that's that's a bad idea. That has nothing to do with it. They bring it up. It gives me a perspective that I hadn't seen before. And when I can look at it from a new way, that's what art does. Then I can find another way to approach it. This is really, really valuable and is one of the wonderful things about humanity. We're different and that's okay. Not only is it okay, it's valuable. That's why in their awkward ways, jobs try to foster diversity like we need different kinds of people we need different kinds of people not on just outward things like men and women and people of different ethnicities and we need people with different ways of thinking those are the easy ways those categories are the easy ways to get there but just having people who have different ideas and different talents and we need that we need that in order to get through this thing called life and to feel great about ourselves and 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 be be who we're meant to be this this book the big sort is a beefy book it's very data driven when i read those kind of books i prefer to read them as audiobooks i found it really useful it had a lot of really good ideas right now it was meaningful <laughs> so i recommend it really good book really excellent and I, uh, I can say, it's a good one. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're interested, if you have questions. I'd like to hear it.